It always says it's streaming on Facebook, but I need to wait until I see it to believe. Got to see it to believe it. Oh. One of those things. <laughs> All right. Good deal. Hello, everybody. Happy Monday and welcome to the Kendrick Show Show. As always, it is a pleasure to be here with you today. And oh my goodness, we have got another business brilliant woman, business boss, babe, whatever you want to call it here with us. Amy, <laughs> pronounce your last name for me so I don't Southern it up. Yeah, Novakovic. Novakovic. Yeah. See, yeah. I can probably turn that into about 25 see? syllables. So oh, people do. Yeah, letters, all kinds of things. I am sure Amy Novakovic is joining us here all the way from the sunny state of Florida. Is it sunny today, Amy? Yes, it is. It's like yeah. 87 degrees already, I think. Oh my gosh, the wind chill was 12 here this weekend. Oh, no. And it's supposed to be in the 70s normally this time of year. And so, yeah, yeah. yeah it's hot. It's hot. Yeah. Uh, Amy is here, and Amy is uh, the, the best way I know to describe it is a money genius. Now, what does a money genius mean? Amy's going to talk to us all about wealth management. Now, I know what you may be thinking. Wait a minute, Kendrick. I'm, I'm, I'm starting a business. Like, I, 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 I'm trying to get me some wealth, but I'm not quite there yet. But Amy can talk to you about that as well. So one of the reasons I wanted to have Amy on the show is because so many really driven, uh, successful women and men go into such massive debt building a business. And it's difficult to get out of even when you start making money. And so I am not the person to help with that. I can teach you how to make all the money you want in the world, but, but, but what you do with it and how you make more off of that money is well beyond my zone of expertise. And so that's why Amy is here. Welcome to the show, Amy. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it is my total pleasure. So Amy, tell us, I, I, I did a really dumbed down version of what you do. I did, a, I, did a, I did a Kendrick version. Tell us what you do. I like that version. Well, really, I run my business with my husband, just trying to educate people on money and their relationship money with money and then how to take it to the next level. Like really the, from basics to the most advanced strategies, we both help people do planning, getting ahead of it in life. And then also once they have the money, we manage it. So we don't have two clients that look alike. We manage everybody's individual accounts from CDs to stocks to options. And then I also do the most basic financial planning and budget. So at what point does somebody need to consider financial planning? Oh, at any point. I mean, it starts with, this is going to sound so basic, Kendrick, but it starts with a budget. I mean, so many people just swipe that credit card, swipe that debit card. Is that you? Is that why you're laughing? You're like, oh, here, you know, I just want to. <laughs> I used to. buy it. I used to, confession time, and, and it still sort of makes me sick in my stomach, but I have learned to appreciate it, hate the word budget. Um, yeah. I have, I've certainly learned to appreciate it and, and, and see the need for it. Running this business has taught me the importance of uh, making very, very budgeted decisions. But yeah. I got I to gotta be honest, even after years of doing this, I still cringe. Why is that? Why can I be so successful? And then when it comes to budget and financial planning, I want to crawl in a hole and, and just hide. Because, Tell me nobody's what ever shown, because nobody's ever shown you the value. It so what's the value? So tell me the value. What's the value? So if you take the most basic fundamental things, right? So you take, I have, I don't know, 5,000 bucks a month in income and I have, 3000 a month in expenses. And the way I find expenses is what do you absolutely need to live? What do you need to live? So I have a mortgage. I have a car payment. I have insurance. I have food. I have energy. I don't want to hear that you got to get your nails done every week. I don't want to hear that you get your hair done every two weeks. I'm talking about what do you need to live to function? And then you find this, this spread of what, what do, what do I do with the money left over? And then you make like an expense. I forget who says it, but it's people that get rich, invest their money and spend what's left, what's left. And people that are poor spend their money and invest what's left. So if you take wow. what's left over, if you take what's left over and you make it like a bill, like another bill, like that you need to survive as an investment, 
in 10 years, you're going to feel so freaking smart. You're going to look back and be like, holy cow, I cannot believe I did that. Even like a hundred bucks a lump. Like this is stupid, easy planning. Like you're using your, your employer 401ks when they have a match. That's free money, people that you're giving up, by the way. <laughs> That's free yeah. money. I so never will. Little, little tiny things that can help you inch ahead that can help you get a savings that you don't have to dig out of the hole and worry about getting mail every week. You know, you can be ahead of it. I never will forget, and this and this is true. And 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 and, and as I mentioned, that I'm somebody who who really shies away from this whole topic. But I never will forget when I first started working. My dad, and then later my husband, also said, "If you take it out in the beginning, you'll never miss it." You know, yeah. like if it comes out of your check, just like it comes out with as your taxes and your insurance comes out, you'll never miss it. And I found that to be very true. But if you treat my, it like an expense, you won't even realize that it's gone. Yeah. So let's transition then just for a second to people who are not employed by corporations, but people who have started their own business and they are really struggling just to make ends meet. They're, they're, they're new in the phase of business and they've, you know, a lot of their money is going back out to expenses. How, what's the best way for them to determine what they absolutely need? Cause yep. you've heard the saying, you know, you got to spend money to make money. Well, sure. How do you, how do you determine what you absolutely need when you're growing a business compared to maybe I can hold off on that until I've made a little bit more money? Yeah. So that's a great question. So, you know, I don't even like the term. I'm going to be like total confession here, like financial advisor. I, there's a lot out there that I just feel like they're not true advisors. They don't give real advice. So here's the real truth of it. Right. So between people that coach and say, spend your money to make your money. And then between the ones that give real advice, what I have to do is I have to put my money where my mouth is. I have to run the numbers. So if you're a business person and you say, Amy, look, if I spend this 2000 bucks on this project versus if I do what you say and invest my money, which is so boring, what's the numbers? Which one is going to get me more? Let's run the risk. Let's run all the scenarios and let's see five years down the road where it gets me more. Okay. So if I put this money into this business venture, what's the upside? Let's punch it in. Let's punch in an estimated return and let's crunch the numbers. I'm going to put it on paper and be like, look, this is what it will do. If, if your, your 2000 bucks evaporates and goes nowhere, this is how it affects you. Versus the upside, this is the potential. So here's option number two. Here's the potential. Is the risk worth the potential? That's decision number one. Decision number two is, should I be investing it instead and waiting on this business opportunity? Because there's always more business opportunities. So maybe mm -hmm. this just isn't the right one. Do we invest it for the time being and then wait for the next business opportunity? So you have two decisions. Is the risk worth the reward or should I invest it versus investing in myself? I always, when I talk to my clients, I say, there's a, there's always an investment. You're either investing in yourself, in your business. That's an investment. Absolutely. Or you're investing in things that I can manage for you. So either way, I have to be the professional that helps you weigh out that decision. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you're married because if my husband happens to be on lunch break right now, which he could be at, you know, at, at lunch, he probably is falling in love again. He's probably like, oh my God, this beautiful woman is saying what I've been telling Kendrick for years. I'm not kidding. Um, as a matter of fact, I bet he's on Facebook right now, giving a little heart because he tries to go to lunch about this time on Monday so he can see his, his wife doing her thing. And I bet I am getting messages right now saying, she is beautiful and brilliant. <laughs> oh my, God. my husband's probably messaging you right now. She's always right. <laughs> well, yes, of course. That's one of the things I love about you, right? I mean, I love to be around other women who are always right. That's right. See? So, okay. So let's talk then about, so I want to talk sort of full swing. And I, and I know that's difficult to do because financial management and planning has a lot of intricacies with it. And a lot of really can be, you know, really, um, small steps, but I sort of want to talk about the whole gamut here. So we've talked a little bit about where do you start and then a little bit about what if you, you run a business, what if you've made some bad financial decisions? So what if you're the person who is in debt, who maybe took a risk on a business opportunity, it didn't pan out the way that you thought it would, uh, and, and now you're facing, you know, a bunch of taxes or something like that. Where do you start? So when you start, when you have issues, when you, when you've got 
And they're not really issues. It's really just something for you to figure out. It's kind of a challenge, really. If you're an entrepreneur, it's like, okay, I'm going to figure out how to do this. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's your new challenge. So don't look at it as like your problem, you know, look at it as something that you got to get through in business. And if, if you change your mindset and if you do an exercise that I do, I have a podcast, so I have the Nova Well Show and on the podcast, there's one session. And actually, I think I put it up on the Woodish Network too. Um, about getting out of debt. I have a whole system on how to get out of debt. So if you can really dedicate yourself and make some minor tweaks, it's really easy to get out of debt. My number one tip to anybody out there that may have debt is don't worry about the balance. Don't worry about the payment amount. Don't worry about the term. Focus on your interest rate. Whichever debt, whichever credit card, whichever loan, whatever it is, has the highest interest rate. Again, I don't care about the balance. I don't care about the payment. Put all your efforts towards paying down the highest interest rate because the one with the highest interest rate, ultimately dollar for dollar, is paying more money to someone else that's not you. Yeah, that makes sense. First place you start is your highest interest rate. And it snowballs, right? So I have a, a client that I just talked to last week and she's paying 600 bucks a month on her credit cards just to try to get out of debt. Mm-hmm. And in six months, she'll be out of debt. <clears throat> so I say, oh my gosh, so in six months, what are you going to do with that $600? <laughs> she says, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, you're used to paying the $600, right? So take that 600 bucks, put it somewhere. Yeah. Like, don't just stop. That's where a lot of people get into deeper trouble. Trouble is they'll accomplish by paying off like one credit card and then they'll just blow that money. What you have to do is take that payment that you're used to paying anyway and put it somewhere, put it towards the next debt, use it as a snowball, add it somewhere or put it away in an investment or put it away in a savings account so that the next time life happens and it will, if anybody out there has never had anything happen to them in their life where they all of a sudden you had that old beat moment where they're looking in the mail and they're like, oh my gosh, like either a medical bill or your windshield breaks or whatever, you have to have a savings. Otherwise you're going to get into debt. Even yeah. as a business owner, you have to have a savings. Otherwise, there's there's going to be things that come up, some sort of, you know, like just I got a phone call out of the blue from my broker dealer. Oh, by the way, it's five hundred dollars per rep per year, and we're gonna bill you next month. Like just out of nowhere. And you have to have a savings or you won't you'll you'll get into debt. You won't ever get ahead. You'll just constantly be putting out fires and digging out holes. All right. So what about on the other? So I said, we're going to talk sort of about this whole gamut. So as the pendulum swings and you start making more money and and you kind of touch base on this, but you, you let, let's say that you have in, in, in business, this banner and I, and I, I I made, I made mistakes in this area as well. I've made lots of financial mistakes if I'm being honest, but let's say you have this banner year, right? And you make just a ton of money and whatever a ton of money is to, to, to you as a listener or a viewer, you've made that amount of money. You've hit your goal. (laughs) What's the first thing you should do with that money? First thing is pay off your highest interest rate debt. Got That's it. That's your first thing. The second thing is fund a savings account. Okay. So put, put in, it depends on your business. Some businesses are cyclical, but put in six to 12 months of your monthly expenses of your business in a savings, just in cash. Don't invest it just in cash, just for when things happen. And then anything above that, you've got to put it away. You've got to put it away in an investment of some kind, something that will generate an interest, an income. So you've got to take it and put it somewhere, whether it be liquid. I'm not saying, don't, don't get me wrong. Don't, don't go putting all your money in retirement account because you're tying it up into your 59 and a half. Yeah. But put it in an investment account where you can get the money right back out whenever you need it within three days. And so tell me what, tell me the difference. Tell, tell, tell people what that means. The difference between an investment account and a retirement account. So a retirement account is either labeled as it's just a title. It's either labeled as IRA, Mm -hmm. either Roth IRA, traditional IRA, or it was a 401k from your former employer. Maybe your employer had a plan for you. All this means it's just taxed differently. So you can have the same investments in both accounts. One account can own Facebook stock. The other account can own Facebook stock. But if one is retirement, this is going to be taxed and penalized, and this one is not. So yep. same investments, just different titling, just like a business account. So I might have my own personal account, and then I have my business account. It might be the same type of checking account, but one's titled differently. One's sure. Taxed. So in t- retirement accounts are just t- a title, 
but it will definitely mean that you have to hold up the money until you're 59 and a half. So that's a long time for some of us. Yeah. So don't, I'm not telling you when, when, a when a normal financial advisor usually gives advice, I'm like, put money into retirement. You know, I'm, I'm a business owner myself and I'm realistic that stuff comes up all the time. And I'm under the impression, don't put everything in retirement accounts because you'll end up paying penalties and taxes later on anyways, as a business owner, put yeah. it in a regular investment account and then get an advisor that gives you advice for you for what's going on in your life. Not just some blanket cookie cutter advice, like, Oh, be diversified and rebalance and you'll be fine. That does not cut it. Especially if you're a business owner trying to make it, you need advice from somebody that is that, that can look at your situation and give you personalized advice for you, for you and your business. Yeah. I think that that is one of the uh, biggest learnings that I've had. I've had a lot, but one of the biggest learnings I've had since starting this business is every single one of them are so different. And, yeah. and you know, I, unfortunately I see just with, with my customers, I see people make a lot of money and then they end up, and I've done this as well, no judgment, but they end up spending a lot of money. They end up investing, you know, they make it, they make a hundred, they invest 150 back into their business. And so their ass is, excuse me, always on the line. Yeah. And that's not a fun place to be. No, now, it, it, it's nice to be able to just coast for a little while. And I used to yeah. think, oh, I'm so driven. I'm so whatever. I'm always going to, but life happens, you know, like I, yeah. life happens and there are times. Life always happens. It's life. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. So I mean, if you put it into an investment account, even though you have access to it, it's easier than just sitting in cash in the bank. Yeah. So and if, if nothing else, you tend to at least double, you tend to at least do a little more research and rethink all of your investment decisions, your business decisions a little bit more just because it's a little bit separated and it takes a little effort to get to it. So if nothing else, even if you're not doing it right, put it in an investment account and buy a CD for all I care. I don't care. Just put it out of your hand so you think through your business decisions. Hey, Amy, when I first got out of college, I worked for a community bank and it was a, a, a newer community bank. And we had a CD that was seven, 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 seven months, $7,000 minimum, 7% interest. Can wow. you believe that? I can. Was that like, oh, five, probably? Oh, Lord, no, that was not eight. Oh, well, wait, no, I graduated college in 2000. Yeah. Wow. So, so 99, 2000, somewhere. I think we started, I started working 2000. So, and it, that's crazy to me now. Like I'm, I was telling my husband that a, a couple of months ago, I was like, we used to have this seven, seven, seven. He's like, I would kill for 7% now. I would kill for that on a CD. But the thing is though, is that was relative for the time. Like yeah. right now, the 10 year investment with the treasury is 2.8%. I know. For 10 years. I know. So, I mean, to get a 2% CD now is like, oh, wow, okay. I know. It's crazy how it changes. It's, it's so crazy. The key is to be a good investor, lock up for long periods of time when interest rates are going down, run out and lock up stuff for as long as you can. When interest rates are going up, stay short term. So like right now, as rates are rising, rising, don't go out and lock something up. No annuity, don't lock it up. Don't lock it up into anything that's interest rate sensitive. No bonds, you know, things like that, that I shouldn't say no bonds, but the regular fixed bonds, don't lock in anything when interest rates are rising. You're going to end up losing no matter how good the rate looks. You know, it's interesting because one of the things that I, I wish and, and I think that we really, as a society, do a disservice to our, our citizens and to ourselves. We should learn this stuff in school. Yes. I, I mean, mean, that's what I, I, I just, I speak at my, I guess you can call it my alumni. I finished my degree there, um, FGCU. I speak there a lot to college kids, entrepreneurs, and trying to teach them these things. Their head is like, like their mind is blown. Like they're, they're yeah. almost their four-year degree and they still have no idea about this stuff. It's insane to me, the stuff that is required, yet the skills that you need to uh, thrive in yeah. society and make money. And, and you, you learn by trial and error. I mean, you, you I know, know and it's awful because it sticks. Some of these decisions stick with you for like your whole life. So it's like, unfortunately, trial and error 
you know, sometimes in this business doesn't work because it sticks with you. Like I know in my business, like forever it's on your record. Like somebody yeah. can go look you up as, you know, on Finra's website and be like, oh, okay. You know, like any record like that. Yeah. You can't, I, you can't I don't understand. understand why they don't, why they don't, why we as a, as an educational system and, and I, and I, let me just say, I have no desire to, to criticize <laughs> the educational system as a whole. I, I, I don't, but I do think that from from the top down, this is something, you know, economics and understanding what's going on in our country and understanding what's going on uh, at a macro level and then at a micro level for ourselves would would do uh, the society as well as the individuals such a such such a a positive uh I'm losing my train of thought, but it would be such a positive impact on everybody if they it, understood. You know, it could only help. It would not yeah. help anything. Like we do education. I think I told you we work with athletes yeah. and entertainers. And so anybody that, you know, is about to come into money or has been so focused on their career and they not only haven't learned it in high school, but maybe haven't ever been around it. It is so crazy to see like the gears turn. Like, that's why I tell you, putting it on paper, like even I help clients, should I get a mortgage? Okay. Should I put money down and get a mortgage or should I pay it all in cash or should I do a 15 year mortgage or a 30 year mortgage? If you put it down on paper, all of a sudden it's like, it becomes so clear as to what the right path is. When you see the numbers, how does it affect your net worth in five years? How does it yeah. affect your income? How does it affect your monthly expenses? What you're going to have to do? Instead of just trying to think about in your mind, oh, what sounds better? You know, what, what do I think is better? You know? Yeah. So yeah. I, that, that's the piece where I can really make a difference is putting it on paper and showing people like if you finance it versus if you pay cash, here's the difference in your net worth and income in five years. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It just jumps off the paper at you. So let me ask you, let me ask you this. If people want to get started, like people are like, okay, great. This is not my area of expertise. And this is one of the things I love about doing the Kendrick Shope show is I have on people who are experts in their area and it gets to expose people to, you know, I, I am a, I, there are lots of things I'm terrible at. There are a few things I'm really good at. And, yeah. and, that, and I have learned in my older age that the things I'm terrible at, I need help with. You know, yeah. I need help with. So, so if people are like, okay, great, I need a budget, I need to get started, or maybe I'm getting ready to come into it to it to some money and need some ideas. Is that something that you can do for them from Florida, or do they need to find an, an investment person where they live, or how does that work? Oh no, we go all over the country, so we're licensed in every state. Um, I, I think today with technology more than ever, maybe when I started in this business, I would say probably find one in your area. But now with like Zoom and Skype and yeah, I mean, man, it's so easy anymore to do meetings um, online and over the phone and over email to do documents, signing documents with like a DocuSign. Like everything is so easy nowadays. Um, I think there, there's no question distance is not an issue, especially being in Florida. Half my clients are leaving to go up north next week. They'll all live up north for the next six months. Yeah. Yeah, you know, for the, so, I mean, yeah. I, I deal with that on a daily basis. I was just in Pennsylvania last week. I was in LA the week before that. I mean, I travel a lot too. So awesome. There's, there's no problem with that. How did you get started doing this? <laughs> really funny story. <laughs> um, so my ex-husband moved me to Florida. I'm from Wisconsin. Um, was the professional student kept going to school and I was like, okay, I'm going to have to be the one that works. <laughs> So I just, we moved to Florida and I knew no one. And I just hit the street, started applying for jobs places. I was in the middle of my psychology degree. Um, and they don't hire you in psychology out of college. I have a psychology so I, degree as well. Yeah. 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 And uh, so it, it didn't do me much good. No. Um, and so I got a job at a bank as a teller. Yeah. So I just moved my way up, started to realize I kind of like this, this, these numbers, you know, and I think I'm interested in this. So I worked my way up to um, be a relationship manager and then actually got into investments from there. I got licensed from there and then built up a great book of business at the bank, um, partnered with my now husband at the bank and then realized I did not like the way they did business. I In 2008, yep. the market crashed. Yep. Um, I had to sit on the phone for four days calling 1200 people. I had a book of 1200 people. 
Yeah. And it's, it's to no fault of the bank. This is every large institution. All these institutions kind of, they're, it's to no fault of the advisor. It's not that the advisor is a bad person. It's just their job is to bring in business. That's just yep. a fact. So when stuff hit the fan in 2008, I had to call everyone when um, Lehman Brothers fails, failed. We got everybody out of the market. And that was when I realized, I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I didn't know half these people that I'm calling and I'm telling them I'm taking care of their money. I just, something feels bad about this. Yeah. So we ended up opening our own independent practice based on that idea that we're going to manage everybody individually and no two accounts are going to look alike. And I'm not going to just pool people's money together and put them in a portfolio. Yeah. 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 I wasn't going to do that anymore. So that's how we got started at Nova. We opened Nova in 2011. That's amazing. Yeah. So kind of crazy how I just had to get a job anywhere and I just landed at a bank and it's just history from there. I really, I mean, I've always been in finance. I was kind of the finance person in my household because my mother sure had for that. That's funny. I don't know if, if, if I, if you knew this or if I told you this and, and I may have, I repeat myself often this, I, the older I get as well, but my first job was a teller. I worked at a bank and then, I mean, I know yeah. I told you I worked at a community bank, but first job was a teller and then kind of worked my way up. But I, like you do not have an affinity for numbers. I hate them. So, oh. <laughs> so there was a, there was a, a point when uh, I got transitioned into selling which is yeah. interesting to think about selling at a bank, right? But it exists. But that's your job. That's Absolutely. Your job. It exists. Yeah. And um, it's sort of, so banking sort of took me here as well on a completely different way. That's, that's yeah. really interesting. Really interesting. That is crazy. But yes, yeah. you're taught from the teller line. It's like, oh, do you have a checking account with us? Do you need a credit card? Oh, I see you have a balance. Do you need a savings? Like if you have to have the selling going at all times. You do. And it's interesting too, just the difference between, at least in my experience, and, and I'm certainly a, a you know, uh, correlation doesn't mean causation, but I worked for a community bank at first that did not focus on selling. They focused oh, on wow. relationships. They Plus focused on, yeah. And I mean, we did not do that from the teller line. And then <laughs> when I moved to the city, holy mother, it's so different. It's yeah, so different it's at a big, at a large institution. Yeah. Yeah, from my hometown, it's still the same people. I'm from a town of 2,000 people. Yeah. So there's like three banks and, you yep. know, 18 bars. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Like everybody knows everybody and their job is not to sell. Their job is just to take care of the people. Absolutely. Like it's that small town feel, right? You know, and then yep. you come to a city and it's like, no, no, like, it's all yep. about the numbers. Like, how yep. much numbers? How many calls did you make this week? How many numbers? How many yes. Are open? Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. So, um, are you a cheese head? You're from Wisconsin. Are you a cheese head? I am. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Huge. Well, when I had, when I started having young kids, I, um, I gotten less and less on the football train. It's kind of hard with a few toddlers to watch football, but I did go to see them at the Packers in the Super Bowl in 2011. That was fun. Awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Um, okay, good deal. So I know that Cheesehead has nothing to do with what we're talking I about, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, seriously, like, I mean, s football and Southern goes together like champagne and strawberries. So, you know, <laughs> right. we're, we're taught that before we're really taught to walk about the importance of football. So I bet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Me yeah, too. yeah, Me too. absolutely else to do in cold weather. It's like, okay, yeah, here's some cheese and Go on absolutely. Here. Absolutely. So if you were, we're, we're, we're going to wrap up here, but if for anyone who, and we'll pop your website in the, in the comments so people know how to contact you. Okay. If, if, if you're going to give somebody one place to start, it sounds to me like what I have learned is start with high interest credit card debt, pay off the highest interest credit card first. First. And then take that money that you were paying and, and put that, as you called it, snowball it onto your next credit card. That's right. And, and if do you, you don't do have, that before you enough, invest? I'm sorry, go ahead. If you're lucky enough to not have another credit card after that, then apply it to put it in an investment account. Start taking that money that you were used to paying anyways and put it away. Even though you have access to the investment account, it's still a little more difficult. And would you, so if somebody's like, okay, I've got this, I've got, I've got, I've got some credit card debt. I've got a little bit of excess money. They would do the credit card first before they do investments. Is that credit right? Card first. Credit, credit card, card first. first. Okay. And then you've got to have a savings account. Otherwise you'll just get back into credit card debt. Okay. So, so if, if you can imagine it, like you have, you have three absolute necessities, expenses, call them expenses. 
Okay, you have your credit card that you have to pay down. You have your savings account, which you have to contribute to every week, every month, whatever, even if it's 20 bucks a week, whatever okay. you can do to build up a savings account. And then once you get six months of living expenses in that savings account, then it's investing. Okay. So you have to have all three. Otherwise, if you don't have the savings, you'll just get back into credit card debt. And if you don't have the investment account, then you'll never get ahead in life. You'll always rely on your one your one flow of income, which is your business. That's not diversification. That's investment 101. That's no, no number one in life to have your egg and <laughs> your eggs in one basket. Yeah. And that's you, your business. You never know what can happen in business. I've started businesses that have failed, like on the side. I've invested in businesses that have failed. I've invested in startups. I get pitched startup ideas all the time. I've personally invested and I've seen clients invest in startups that fail. So don't go putting everything into your business. There's a responsible amount for sure to invest in yourself, but get your other stuff straight first, then invest in your business and your business will do that much better because you're not so focused on, oh, I'm in debt. Oh, I'm in, I'm doing this. Oh, you know, one of the biggest, that, that's probably one of the biggest mistakes I made was I, I, and I, and, 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 and to some extent I believe this, but I, but I, I should have been smarter about it. I thought if I'm going to bet on anybody, I'm going to bet on myself. Myself. Yeah. And, and, and I do believe that, but there are, you know, there's a whole globe full of extenuating circumstances, circumstances that affect that out me. of your control, out of my control. And I, and you know, I, 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 I invested everything I personally had and a lot of what we had as a married couple. And, and I, I if, you know, if it, it was hard, it's still, it still is hard. I yeah. mean, you know, we're going to, the business is going to make it, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. beyond that point, but it's still hard to, and so I, I, uh, I completely wholeheartedly 100% agree with every bit of this advice and wish that I had seriously, this is stuff that my husband told me. I wish I had taken it to heart because it probably would have saved us, uh, saved us money originally and uh, certainly would have saved some, some disagreements. Well, so, it's crazy because I always tell people too, like when I'm talking to the students, I always say like, look, no one ever comes to me at the age of 60 and is like, oh, if I would have only saved less. Yes. Oh, if I would have only, yes. started, if I would have only started later. <laughs> that's true, right? Yeah. That's what a great, that's, that's, that's a great thing to leave people with. Nobody ever says, I wish I'd saved less. Nobody ever says, I wish I had started later. So there you yeah. go. I mean, that makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. Yeah. And well, I will say that my husband's well. willingness to save has saved our rears more than once. So oh. I am a, I'm a big believer in this. It may make me want to crawl over in a hole, but I'm still a big believer in it because I have well, seen the power of doing be better it. Right. Too. Like I said, this is about your business. Like I'm not saying don't invest absolutely I'm saying get yourself in order first. And then your business will be that much stronger because guess what? Your business will go through hard times too. Yep. If you can't make it because you've overextended yourself, then your business is going to end up failing anyways, whether no matter how great you are, it's going to end up not working out anyways, because you didn't prepare. You have to just be, you have to be prepared because life happens. It's that simple. You do. And I think I read, and it's been a while since I've read this, but according to us news and world report, the top reason, let's see, um, 80%, maybe it's 70% of all small businesses fail within the first three years because the numbers don't add up. Right. I mean, it's, it's right there. It's not on paper. It's, you know, we think, oh, we'll do this, yeah, we'll do this, paper. but just, yeah. So well, the tips that I give my business owners that I talk to, I just say, look, debt, with it, debt is still something you have to be able to afford. Like, I get it. I get that you get debt because the cash isn't there. I understand that. But that doesn't mean that you should just get any debt out there. You still have to calculate, if I go into debt, how much extra income does that generate? Where does the income payment come from to pay yeah. that debt? Those yeah. numbers have to be crunched out. I get you don't have the cash. That's not what I'm talking about. But the payment, you have to have a clear plan of where that money comes from. Otherwise, you're just flying by the seat of your, your pants and asking, by the grace of God, I hope that I make it. <laughs> yeah. You know? And sometimes it works out, but I've seen it a lot of times where it doesn't. Yeah. And the last thing you want for any kind of business plan, whether it's, I mean, is, is a wing and a prayer, right? Because yeah. I mean, it just doesn't, it, I mean, why, why would you do it that way when you can do it, um, 
a much more strategic way, a way that is is, is more is proven to to work. So I, I completely agree. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. Yeah, this you're welcome. Is fantastic. Any other questions? I mean, let me know. I'm happy to be a resource. I really enjoy the education piece of what I do. So. Well, and I can tell that you're, you're, you're very straightforward, re- very much number one, number two, number three, which is what I like. And it's what my people like. So thank you. We'll pop your website in the, in the comments. so People know how to contact you and it's been an absolute pre- pleasure. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me again. You thank are you. so welcome. I believe in you and I believe in your business. You can do this.